Psst. Hey. Subscribe. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to Monkey Shine Lab. This. This is uh, called Getting Old. Um, I broke a bone in my hand, like right in here, like a really long time ago, back when I was in my 20s, as Andre likes to say, the 1920s. Um, uh, yes. But uh, anyway, busted bone in here kind of hangs me up and screws me up in a lot of different ways. Uh, but I re-aggravated it yesterday while we were uh, filming all this stuff that you're about to see. So, take a look at this stuff because I injured myself to get this footage. This is really cool. This is a whole bunch of stores we did not know existed. Um, I have since looked them up on maps and stuff like that in the apps, but, um, and have, have located them. So I will try to put all of the information in the description for the various different places that we were at this time, but this is all new places. It's really cool. And, uh, I would like to thank all of the purveyors of all of the stores who allowed us to film a little bit without getting anybody else on film. Anyway, take a look at that. And like I said, I have to blank the audio because a lot of time people are playing classic rock or uh, there are people having conversations and stuff like that. And I like to protect folks' privacy when they're in the store with me or I'm in the store with them, however you want to look at it. Anyway, check out all these really cool uh, new and vintage toys and then um, I'll be right back after to show you some really cool stuff that we picked up. Okay, anyway, here we go. Maybe, maybe I don't make the screen like this one. Um, I mean, I want this one. <laughs> I want this one. I'm just maybe one. The death's head moth? I'm feeling it. I know, I'm feeling it. I don't own one. I don't own a squash model one. Like, I can't be judged for this moment. I know. I know. And it's and true. You don't. Look at that mushroom base. I've never seen these. Like, I've never seen these. That's skulls. really cool. And look, little skulls. But then I turn and I see this thing. And I'm like, oh my God, I need them. Like, right? Like, oh. A Cthulhu Squashmallow? Yeah. But he's like a baby dragon. But if you look at the face. And if you I know. I mean, I'm just. What this is supposed to be on the inside. It says I'm a squishable.
I'm going to grab it in a second here from a little bit of a distance away, but this uh, store that you've just been looking at, that we've just been looking through, is called Dragon Vine, and their tagline is, we sell awesome. I will put the uh, the location in yes, the description. Yes, they do. They do sell awesome. And Annie, Annie found something that she couldn't live without. I'll explain in a second. Anyway... Thank you very much to the folks who work here uh, for letting us take a little video. Really appreciate it, and we will be back. Yeah. You're never going to find an XL in a video game store. <laughs> That's too bad. It's too hard. I know. But I'll pull it out so you can see the whole graphic. Because that is cool. That's neat. Yeah. Coolness. Oh, shout out to Chris. Wait, shout out to Ghostbuster Chris. <laughs> Neat. So there's Dragon Vine right there. And then also we found a, uh, a video game shop right next to it. Ah! And that was Claw City that you gotta look at. It's really busy here, so I don't wanna uh, get hit by a car or take video of anybody that doesn't want their picture taken. So anyway, we're off to the next stop like you got anything else to do. Also, there's this uh, card shop here where they sell Magic, The Gathering, and other uh, uh, card games. They were doing a card game tournament in there, so I didn't want to film them either, just out of, uh, you know, courtesy. That's the word I'm looking for, courtesy. Courtesy. Courtesy, courtesy. courtesy. Anyway, uh, Mox Valley Games right there. Um, this whole strip mall is just a great nerd stop here. I'm going to put the uh, put the pin in the uh, description below. That was a really good <laughs> oh, there's somebody in the park. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be alright. Um, that was a really good stop because um, I've never seen so much nerdish in one area before. It was really great. That was all my wife finding that. And um, it is. And uh, so anyway, I just I did want to say thank you very much. This place is just hopping with people right now. So on a Sunday, it's kind of busy, but um, uh, on to our next stop, which will be wherever it is. That that was all my wife going. Hey, look. See, I don't, I don't, I don't really do anything on the show. We're gonna try a Saint Vincent de Paul. It's supposedly like so close we can spit on it. Cool. Saint Vinny's cool me. Um, Talk I, about the Claw City that probably we didn't City. film anything. I that did. I got a little film. Oh, it, did you? Okay, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. There was a child in there playing. Okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt it. Yeah, save it. So, save it, save it. anyway. All right, Saint Vinny, what you got for me today? Pick that up for Andre. This copy of Phantom Menace.
here we go, super thrift. Here we go. It may suck. Welcome back. So uh, I would like to thank again everybody uh, who let us invade their stores today. Um, and um, I'm going to put all of the information for getting a hold of any of those places or beginning to hunt them down in the description. So um, if you're looking for them, you can find them there. But they're also um, just basically in Springfield, Oregon. And um, yes, that is the Springfield from The Simpsons. If you don't believe me, go back and look at our other videos. Um, in Bits of Oregon, I think we did a, a thing where we ran around and found a lot of the uh, Simpsons characters that are painted all over town. Uh, in the alleys, behind buildings, in different places. So it's kind of fun. You can go all over the place and find um, different Simpsons characters, but that is the agreed upon Springfield, Springfield, Oregon. And there's Prefontaine and all the others are done up in the, in the Simpsons style, Matt Groening's style. Um, but at uh, the Dragon Vine, which was our first stop, we didn't even know that they existed. So I thought it would be kind of fun to tell everybody else who might not know that they exist. But they also have a, um, a, a Lincoln City address for one of their shops. So if you're out there on the coast, you can find um, a Dragon Vine. Their little sort of catchphrase is, we sell awesome, and they do, a ton of it. There was so much in the way of back issues in this place that as I said to my wife, I freeze up like I couldn't think of one uh, comic line that I'm currently collecting. And, I, and I'm in the middle of like uh, so much, but like I get in there and I see all these long boxes of back issues and all this other stuff. I mean, from floor to ceiling and excellent prices. And my head just, Breezes. It's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, I does not compute. So, um, they, the, the people who were running the store, uh, were really nice to us. The, the two people behind the counter. So thank you very much. I didn't get their names and I'm sorry. Um, we don't, we try not to bother people outside of just sort of asking if we can film. Um, but I always, I always say, you know, you've got to try to spend a little money in the store, especially if they've been that considerate to us. So um, I did pick up this reprint of uh, 
the American comics, all American comics, with uh, the debut of the Green Lantern. Um, it's a it was a six ninety nine reprint, and uh, I picked it up for seven fifty, so all of fifty cents on um, a bagged and boarded copy of the reprint, and so you know there was that. And I gotta say, I'm coming back to the shop because they had some of the coolest Godzilla toys that I've ever seen. Um, if you missed them, go back to the beginning of the video where we go into the store because they're right there almost, I think in the beginning of the video. And it's like they're Transformers or Bakugan, but they unfold and unfold to be like Godzilla 1954, the 70s version of Mechagodzilla. They had one for Ghidorah. They had all of the different characters. And again, really reasonably priced. I think these things were 15 bucks. Um, and some of the other uh, sort of harder to find Toho monsters. And they were, they were excellent prices. I, I cannot recommend the store enough. It had something for everyone as you saw even annie was getting into it which was a lot of fun and i bought her a dumbo because she said as a little girl her ears used to stick out and so people in the family and stuff used to call her dumbo she's anything but but anyway my beautiful wife um and then when we were at tra uh, Trash and Treasures, um, most excellent dude behind the counter. Uh, and I will, I will be back in to buy because that was where all of the, like the real vintage Star Wars figures were that I showed in the cases. And um, I also picked up two figures. Let me, uh, here they are. Um, I haven't even taken the price tags off them yet, but these are McFarlane Universal Monsters. And um, I, the first one I saw was the, the Wolfman. And then I saw the Frankenstein was laying down uh, on a shelf up above it. And the thing about these is that all of the stuff they came with is still here. These uh, chains that uh, hold Frankenstein in place, and in the <laughs> werewolf, in the Wolfman's case, I'm not sure why, but they gave him this big ass shovel. Um, probably would have made it better sense to give him the nightstick uh, that they kill him with, or something. Spoilers, sorry if you haven't seen that 30, 1930s film, 1940s. Excuse me. Uh, I hate to ruin it for you. But anyway, those were each five bucks a piece. So, um, you know, pretty much new, just taken out of the package. Um, uh, the man who was sitting behind the counter told me that they were on card when he, when he got them, but uh, that he had to uh, take them out because, the, you know, the bubbles were getting uh, yellow and nobody ever wants to buy stuff when it's in that condition. Just take it out of the package. But all of the parts and all the pieces are there for these two and 10 bucks for the set. Really neat. Ah. And we're back. Um, I know I, I kind of sound like uh, a grandparent saying the word really neat. They are really neat. And I am a grandparent. So, I mean, technically, I'm allowed to use those terms now. Yeah, at least if I use them in a sentence. It's kind of like really, really, really sour swear words. Although, uh, I've been trying to curb that shit anyway. All right. Um, the last couple things I have to show you. Um, I also, I picked up a Trash, to treasure, trash and Treasures. Um, I was looking through a, a, a stack of, it looked like, uh, you know, like office pull, uh, in and out boxes. 
and I s happened to see these two comic books on top. There were a bunch of other, like Richie Rich and some other stuff that I wasn't necessarily all that interested in. Some little Lulu. Um, but I had never really heard of Marvel Tomb of Darkness before. So this was um, an obviously easy one to pick up for me. It is well loved. As you can see, there's plenty of chipping that happened on that corner. Um, this is not a comic which will accrue any value. I just simply wanted to rescue it and put it in a bag and board so that for the rest of its days, it didn't get any more beat up. Um, but I also am very interested in the subject matter and you can't really buy horror comics from the good old days. Um, anything less than about $5 an issue for a lot of things when you find them in stores and stuff like that. You gotta be, you gotta be like me or Andre and, and, and go digging around. But um, the next and uh, thing that I found in that stack was issue number seven of the original run of the Micronauts, which has um, the man thing in it. And um, I, you know, I will grab anything and everything that has the man thing, especially stuff that is from this era. Um, again, this one's kind of loved, but it's in better condition than the, uh, than the Tomb of Darkness. Like I said, I've never really seen this before. Um, anyway, I, well, to, to, you know, I'm not omniscient. I don't know everything. I'm just a country doctor, Jim. What the hell do you expect from me? Sorry, it's been a very long day. Um, anyway, um, that's kind of what I've got to show you here. This uh, I, I got at the Engelberg's Ante, uh, Antiques downtown Salem, Oregon here. Um, and if you missed that episode and by the statistics, a lot of you just passed by it. Um, I found some really cool stuff at that store too. So please go check it out. And if you're rolling through Salem or middle Oregon here or the coast, please check out all these stores that um, I've shown you today. They have people in them who want your money and they have cool stuff. Go buy something, please. All right, <coughs> obviously the heat is getting to me. Um, and I know, I know, I'm the one last thing I'm going to do is talk about the Mr. Beast bar. Okay, for those of you who haven't been following along, um, a couple of episodes ago, I purchased and consumed a Mr. Beast peanut butter crunch bar. And I've been promising a review of it. And so I will do that now. Um, I don't know if any of you out there have been following along with the Mr. Beast saga so far, but apparently YouTube's greatest creator um, has been uh, engaging in some possibly unethical practice in terms of holding uh, giveaways and um, there's some other BS going around, but um, after Andre and I opened one of his blind box, $25 blind box toys, the Panther, um, I kind of felt like I needed to talk about uh, his chocolate bar because I had seen some other people talk about it. I had seen some people absolutely trash on it because, um, you know, the guy, he says he cares about you know, 
uh, diabetes and all these other things that happen from eating too much candy and all this. Um, I, I don't want to I don't want to get into it. Um, I am not passing any judgment on the man or his cha his YouTube channel or anything I, or his fans. I I don't have an opinion on that, but I do have an opinion on the chocolate bar, and that is is that it's not bad. It's really not bad. It doesn't strike me as something, you know, sort of life changing that you would find, say, in, um, uh, what is that, you know, Joe's. Um, it, it's, it's not a bad candy bar. And I did, and I'm, and I'm saying this purely from a standpoint of what it tastes like. I did not look at the price, okay? I didn't want to know what I was paying for it. I just wanted to judge the product itself, okay? So the chocolate is 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 decent. Um, it was nicely pliable and sort of soft. The rice pop puffs were all uniformly spread throughout the chocolate and it was good that way. And it had a nice little pop of peanut butter in there, in a layer in there. Um, the bar itself was wrapped well in, in, in a, uh, what felt like a, a, a fairly degradable paper packaging, you know, not a lot of plastic involved. I was like, I like that. Okay. But what I'm going to say is, is that this is not a life altering chocolate bar. It's not gonna have me shifting off of, say, my Reese's. Um, you know, like, I, I would equate this probably closest to a Reese's stick, you know? If you've had those, you've had a slightly more tasty snack. Anyway, I know that's been, a, it's waiting a really long time to hear a bunch of bullshit about a chocolate bar. <laughs> Thanks very much, folks, and I will see you again very, very soon. Take it easy. Bye.